Hey guys, thanks for watching another Jaguars United video cast. Today we are continuing with our positional breakdowns and we are doing linebackers. I'm super pumped to dive into this unit, but before we do, I have to ask you, go follow all of our social media. We're on Twitter, we're at Jaguars underscore United. We're on Instagram at Jaguars United underscore. Easiest way, check out the website, jagsunited.com, and you can check out our apparel, our articles, links to our podcasts, and everything that we have on there. So go check it out, and uh, do us a favor, give us a thumbs up on the video. Uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, it's no secret that this team struggled at the linebacker position in 2019. They went through a turn style of linebackers due to injuries. Quincy Williams playing in 494 snaps, Donald Payne playing in 348 snaps, Leon Jacobs 325, Austin Cletro, 234, uh, Miles Jack, 600. So they had all kind of guys in there that they were looking to solve the linebacker problem. And they went after that issue in free agency with the signing of Joe Schobert. They signed the former Browns linebacker to a five-year, $53 million deal. I think they gave him $22 million guaranteed. Uh, the Browns just couldn't match that offer from the Jags. And he's going to bring to this team a lot of things. His coverage grade. Uh, through PFF, he's first in almost every category um, as far as how he plays the pass and how he can read quarterback's eyes. He had four interceptions last year, and this guy can make plays in coverage. Additionally, he'll bring support to the run game. Um, he had a 47 run defense grade last year, which isn't great, but there was a lot of issues on that Browns team that was 30th in the league in stopping the run. The former 2016 fourth round pick from Wisconsin, he began as a special teams guy. Um, at 6'1", 245, he kind of worked his way into the starting lineup for the bank, uh, Browns. And after his second year in 2017, uh, he was named to the Pro Bowl team. Great player, heady player, smart player, kind of knows what's going on. Very instinctive, kind of knows what's going on, uh, can read things quickly. Um, he's had more than 100 tackles in the last three seasons. Also had four interceptions last year, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery. And he can just add a lot to this defense. And locking him into a five-year deal will allow him to be on this team long-term. When all of the young guys kind of grow and get better and get more experience, Schobert will be there with him. Um, he can bring a team together. He can galvanize a unit. Uh, this is what he had to say about kind of being the center captain of a unit defensive core. For an NFL football game, it's supposed to be a fun time, supposed to have fun. And I just try to keep everybody's spirits up, keep everybody level-headed. Like the way I go out there, I just try to be calm and steady and do the same thing every play, no matter what happens. And I uh, just try to pass that message along to the other guys and hopefully they listen a little bit. The best thing about Joe Schobert is that it will allow Miles Jack to move to the outside. And we're gonna get to Miles Jack in a little bit, but his ability to play in the middle of the field, in coverage and against the run, will allow him to really make this linebacking court take the next step and allow some of these young guys to kind of come in underneath him, learn the game, learn how to be a pro, learn what it means to be a solid, consistent player. The guy's only missed three games, I think, since 2016. Uh, going to add a lot to this defense. I think he was one of the best free agent signings in the offseason from any team. I'm super pumped about Joe Schobert. I think he's going to add a lot to this core, and I can't wait to see him play on this defense. The next linebacker is Miles Jack, and Miles Jack is a fan favorite because he obviously was a steal in the second round out of UCLA. Incredibly athletic, incredibly gifted in a lot of different areas, um, can cover, can play against the run. Um, great player that's going to be with this team long term. The team wrapped him up in a four-year, $57 million contract extension before the 2019 season. Um, unfortunately, he kind of dropped off last year, only played in 11 games, uh, PFF grade of a 46. But there was a lot of factors that went into that that are hard to blame uh, just Miles Jack. Uh, he only played in 633 snaps the last season. Um, as a comparison to like 2017, he played like over 1,000 snaps. Um, 42 solo tackles last season, which doesn't even rank him in the top 150. Half of a sack, one interception, zero force fumbles. Obviously not great stats last year, but again, only played in 11 games um, and didn't really exactly have a multitude of help around him. Joe Schobert is going to allow him to move over to outside linebacker, which is really good. He's shown he can play that position at an elite level. Like I said, uh, 79 PFF grade in 2017 when he was on that outside linebacker position. He'll be able to set the edge on run plays and outside run zone plays. He'll be able to cover slot receivers and tight ends on play action. He'll be able to play the flats in the run game. All things that he excels in. And, and more importantly, with Schobert being on this team, he'll be able to kind of play off his instincts, which 
instead of having to think of things through and having to think about his reads or which way are the guards pulling versus which way is the running back going with misdirection and all those things when they're flying through your head they kind of make you not be able to play with your instincts and Miles Shack is an instinctual athletic player I'm stoked that he's wrapped up long term I'm stoked that he's here um, I'm expecting 2020 to be a really good season for him and paired up with Joe Schobert this could be a strong point on this team and we could have gone from a weak point to a strong point so I'm pumped about Miles Jack I think he's gonna have a great year in 2020 the next linebacker I want to talk about is Shaq Quarterman, and I have done a 180 on Shaq Quarterman. If you watched our draft breakdown where I broke down the draft picks, I wasn't high on Shaq Quarterman initially. But as with most things, with time, I kind of re-looked at it and saw how this is actually a perfect fit for the Jacks. He was drafted in the fourth round, pick 140. He's from Jacksonville. He grew up in Orange Park. He went to Oak Leaf High School. Very good high school around here. 6'1", 240. Perfect Sam linebacker. And let me explain to you what I mean by Sam linebacker is typically in a game, um, you either have three linebackers or you have three defensive backs. Like that's the choice the defensive uh, coordinator makes. When he chooses three linebackers, he has a mic, an outside, and a Sam. And that's the third guy. That guy lines up to the strong side of the field. What that basically means is that he has to be disruptive in the run game so he's going to be taking on a block from a tackle he's going to be taking on a block from a fullback a pulling guard and he has to be disruptive he has to either keep one arm free to try to make a play or he's going to try to turn that blocker a different direction than one he wants to go but he's got to be able to contribute on run plays Shaq Quarterman a four-year starter at Miami is a tackling machine you look at his stats from college and they were just off the charts um, 182 solo tackles 356 total tackles for the hurricanes 46 and a half tackles for loss and 12 sacks he was a two-time first team all acc nominee and winner so uh, i mean he is a guy that you can put in on run plays and will come in and help you in the run immediately he may not play on third down. He may not play on obvious passing downs, but he's going to be doing what we kind of wanted Leon Jacobs to do. Um, but Shaq Quarterman has a four-year resume of doing it at a high level at Miami. He's a short burst linebacker, an old school linebacker. Um, honestly, if people are looking for another Puzz in this lineup, Shaq Quarterman is the closest guy to Puzz that we have. Uh, it, it, area quickness is through the roof. Um, when he gets his hands on you, he's tackling you. Um, he may not move laterally great, but you don't need to. When you're coming downhill and you're reading what the run game is doing, you're trying to fill your gap, you're trying to tackle the ball carrier, that's what he can do. Shaq Quarterman is going to be a great player this year. I expect him to play about 40% of the snaps once he kind of solidifies himself into the defense as that guy that can come in and play alongside Schobert and Jack. And I think he's going to be a great addition to this linebacking core. Next up, we have Quincy Williams. And Quincy Williams was drafted just last year in the third round. And he was actually drafted with one of the picks that we got for Dante Fowler. So he was kind of the exchange for that trade with the Rams and he was drafted at a Murray State a small school in the Ohio Valley Conference that isn't known for football probably more known for Ja Morant and basketball but his film was him coming downhill as a box safety stroking people lighting people up behind line of scrimmage jarring the ball loose uh, quite frankly a lot of helmet to helmet collisions that you we were excited as a Jaguar fan to see he kind of started the season a little roughly. He had the injury. He had a slight meniscus tear in his knee. Um, was only able to play 494 snaps last season, but 432 of those snaps were in the box, and 37 of those came as the slot DB coverage guy. Um, I would have expected to see him more involved in the safety position and the box safety kind of look and on play actions and things like that. With a 33.1 defensive grade, the PFF, uh, he's got some room for improvement, but I don't think anyone expected him to have a stellar year last year. There's going to be a huge adjustment coming from the Ohio Valley Conference to the NFL. So I think with time, there's something with Quincy Williams that could potentially be here, if not just a special teams ace. The speed that he has, his ability to tackle, um, really can afford him spaces and snaps somewhere on the field in some situations. I'm not expecting him to be a pro bowler next year, but I do think that he will take a gradual step next year. And again, 
this is a young defense. All these guys that we've been talking about are young guys who could be with this team long term um, and can really solidify and create an identity of an athletic, fast defense that can play in space. So like Quincy Williams, uh, we'd like to see him bump up his play a tad bit better, uh, finish the season with, I think, 48 tackles. Um, I, I expect a little bit better out of that from him, and I think he will. He expects more from himself. He's got pedigree, um, puts a lot of expectations on himself, and I expect him to have a breakout year in the sense of someone who plays 600 snaps type of breakout year, um, which would be about 100 more than he played last year. So expecting that from him, but only time will tell. And the last guy that we're going to talk about in this video is Leon Jacobs, linebacker out of Wisconsin who was drafted two years ago in 2018 in the seventh round. Leon Jacobs is an interesting guy, and I've been a big fan of his since we drafted him. Seventh round guy, he's contributed 42 combined tackles last year, 47 solo tackles in the last two years combined, four tackles for loss last year, three quarterback hits, a sack. Like This guy is always around the ball. He's always around the quarterback. Very strong guy. If you've ever seen any of his workout videos, um, you can tell he's a beast in the weight room. Um, a candidate to play that Sam linebacker spot between him and Shaq Quarterman. I think they're a great tandem that kind of work together, grow together, play together on special teams, those types of things. He can set the edge. Um, he was a guy that I thought was going to be like a bowling ball type linebacker who can just stick his head in there and just, just be disruptive, which he is. But he's actually really good at coming off the edge and getting pressures on quarterbacks. And it's something that we didn't expect from Leon Jacobs. He was uh, in college for five years. He registered a year at Washington, had a, or Wisconsin, had a great career at Wisconsin. And uh, it was a guy that we kind of thought was just going to be sp strictly a special teams guy. But we saw he's able to make tackles in space. He's able to read quarterbacks well. He's able to set the edge, do a lot of things that linebackers can do. And at only 24 years old, uh, he's a guy who's got a lot of time that can grow. He's got a lot of time that he can develop into a linebacker that can fit this scheme and, and play between the tackles or outside of the tackles either way. So excited about Leon Jacobs. I think he's going to fit what we do in the future really, really well. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, do all that stuff you know what to do. Follow our social media, give us a comment, uh, get involved. That way, if you give us a comment or a tweet or something, then we read it on our podcast and you can be a part um, of this team that we do. I mean, we love involving the fans. We love involving you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, go Jags.